Welcome to a lesson on some of the more common volume formulas. Volume is the amount of three-dimensional space a solid occupies. So for example, if you were to purchase coffee or gas for your car, you're purchasing a certain amount of the liquid or a specific volume of the liquid. Of course, volume is also extremely important when performing chemistry and science experiments. Some of the more common units for volume using the metric system would be cubic centimeters, cubic meters, and liters. For the U.S. customary system, some of the more common units would be fluid ounces, cubic inches, cubic feet, cups, pints, quarts, and gallons. For our first example, let's find the volume of a cube pictured here, where a cube is a box-shaped solid object that has six identical square faces. Notice here we have six faces that are all four centimeters by four centimeters. And the volume is equal to A cubed, where A is the length of any side or edge. So for the volume of our cube, the volume is equal to four centimeters cubed. Notice here we cube the four and cube the units. So this would be four to the third times centimeters cubed. Four to the third is equal to 64 and therefore the volume is 64 cubic centimeters. Notice how by leaving the units in the formula, we won't forget that the units will always be cubic units. And since the volume is 64 cubic centimeters, that means that 64 cubic centimeters would fit perfectly inside this cube. Now let's find the volume of a rectangular prism pictured here, where a rectangular prism is a solid figure in which all six faces are rectangles and the volume is equal to L times W times H, where L is the length, W is the width, and H is the height. So the volume will be equal to three feet times four feet times six feet. Well, three times four is 12, 12 times six is 72, therefore the volume is 72 cubic feet. Next we have a right circular cylinder, again pictured here, where a right circular cylinder is a cylinder with circular bases and with the axis joining the two centers of the bases perpendicular to the planes of the two bases. And the volume is equal to pi r squared h, where r is the radius and h is the height. So the volume of our right circular cylinder is equal to pi, Remember pi is an irrational constant, times r squared, which would be five meters squared, times the height, which is seven meters. So we'd have pi times five meters squared would be 25 meters squared, times seven meters. Well, 25 times seven is 175, so we'd have 175 pi cubic meters. So this would be the exact volume of a right circular cylinder. Let's also get our decimal approximation using a calculator. So we'd have 175, and then for this calculator, if we press second caret for the exponent key, that brings up pi. We press enter, rounding to two decimal places, this would be 549.78. So the volume is approximately 500, 49.78 cubic meters. Now one thing to be aware of here is by using pi on the calculator, we're using pi to approximately eight or nine decimal places. If we use pi as approximately 3.14, our approximation will be slightly different and a little less accurate. Now let's find the volume of a prism where for our example we have a triangular prism because the two bases are triangles. A prism is a polyhedron with two polygon faces lying in parallel planes and with the other faces parallelograms. To find the volume of a prism, we find the product of capital B and H, where capital B is the area of the base and H is the height. So for our triangular prism, the volume would be equal to the area of the base, which would be the area of this triangle, where the area formula would be one-half base times height, I'm going to use h sub t for the triangle because the second h here is the height of the prism. So we'll say times h sub p for the height of the prism. 
So therefore the volume is going to be equal to one-half times the base of the triangle, which is two inches, times the height of the triangle, which is nine inches, times the height of the prism, which is six inches. Well, two times nine is eighteen. Eighteen times one-half is nine. So we have nine square inches times six inches, which would be fifty-four cubic inches. So fifty-four cubic inches would fit perfectly, would fit perfectly inside our triangular prism. Next we have a sphere, where a sphere pictured here is a solid that is bounded by a surface consisting of all the points at a given distance from a point constituting the center. So for our sphere, this would be the center, and notice how the radius is eight millimeters. The volume is equal to four-thirds pi r cubed, and therefore the volume of our sphere is equal to four-thirds times pi times eight millimeters cubed. Eight cubed is equal to five hundred twelve, so we have four-thirds pi times five hundred twelve millimeters cubed, which I'm going to write as five hundred twelve over one times millimeters cubed. Notice here nothing simplifies, and therefore the exact volume would be two thousand forty-eight divided by three pi millimeters cubed. But once again, let's get our decimal approximation by approximating pi using the calculator. We do want to put our fraction in parentheses, so open parenthesis two thousand forty-eight divided by three, and then times pi. Running to two decimal places, this will be approximately two thousand one hundred forty-four point six six. So we have approximately two thousand one hundred forty-four point six six cubic millimeters. Now for our last example, we'll find the volume of a right circular cone pictured here, where a right circular cone is a solid generated by rotating a right triangle about one of its legs. So for example, if we focus on this right triangle here, notice how if we rotate this about this leg, it would form this right circular cone. And the volume is equal to one-third pi r squared h. Therefore, our volume is equal to one-third times pi times r squared, which would be four kilometers or four kilometers squared, times the height, which is six kilometers or six kilometers. So this would be one-third pi times sixteen kilometers squared times six kilometers. But notice here, this is six over one, but the six and the three do simplify. There's one three and three and two threes and six. And since sixteen times two is thirty-two, we have thirty-two, and don't forget the pi, kilometers cubed. Once again, let's get our decimal approximation. Thirty-two pi is approximately one hundred point five three. Therefore, the approximate volume would be one hundred point five three kilometers cubed. I hope you found this helpful.